Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to yet another episode of Take Two on Soundstage. I am your host, Jay Lee. And this is a Sony speaker, but not any Sony speaker, it's the Sony SAZ-1. Now this is a reference grade near field, an attempt to really you know, bring the best out of a near field setup. And this is an $8,000 speaker. Now I know, I know, before you click away because of the pricing, I just want you to know that this packs a lot of technology inside that is very, very unique and very interesting. So even though, you know, I can't afford it and some of you may not be able to afford it, I think it's an interesting topic to kind of you know, look at. Now, in this video, I'm going to, you know, kind of give you my experience, how it sounded to me, how I used it and stuff like that. But for the, you know, the goodies, the because it had, a, like I said, a lot of technology in this unit, if you want to know the entirety of this unit, head over to soundstagesimplify.com because Gordon Brockhouse has written a very, very informative review on this unit right here on April 15th, 2021. So there'll be a link in the description below or you can, again, head over to soundstagesimplify.com to find his review, but definitely have a read. Now. This speaker, in my personal experience, is something that I really wanted to hear and I did, in fact, reach out to Sony and then Soundstage asked me if I want to review it. So I said, no, I just want I just want to review it. So here it is. Now, if, when I first looked at this, I was quite intimidated because it had so much, you know, build to it and rightfully so, it's very heavy in, in terms of a speaker design, but very compact at the same time. And it's very unique looking. Just by looking at it, it's very, very unique looking. Now, let's take a look at the driver design first. So we have uh, well, an array of tweeters in the front and a four inch woofer in the back here. But now that's not all. Now there's a good reason why we have those three tweeters, but that's not all we have a another woofer inside the unit that you don't see inside here um, opposing the driver in the front so if you have the front driver like this the other driver is facing the other way and i find this interesting because if you remember one of the subwoofers that i really liked was the kef kc62 from kef and they had that subwoofer with the you know opposing driver uniq design and you see it with the SVS subwoofers now as well with their Arena series. And you see a lot of that kind of design now to uh, you know kind of get rid of that resonance inside the cabinet. And you see it on the Sony as well. So maybe, just maybe we're onto something here. Now this actually is a all-in-one unit in a sense that it has a DAC built in and so it accepts digital inputs, it has USB, optical stereo mini and also a kind of only for sony devices like their xperia uh, phone or walkman uh, they have an input for that as well so in terms of the dac used inside this unit it is not using a atm dac or a saber dac it's not an off-the-shelf dac chip that they're using in here they're actually using fpga to code you know custom code it so that's also very interesting and you know I think unique because it kind of allows them to do different things in the design itself as you'll see uh, in the DSP section uh, later on this video. But if you see the overall cabinetry design, something that I want to a little bit focus on as part of this video, you just see that the entire unit is very, very well built. Almost like, you know, if I saw this kind of like in a military movie, right, in a military setting, I would think that this is some type of tool. And that's exactly what this is, is it's a tool in my opinion. Not for military use, but for, I guess, um, more of a you know, serious home studio or near field listeners. Now looking at the back here, you do get an XLR input as well as an RCA input, but you'll also see something a little bit different that you may have seen in older printers or in your, I don't know, I used to have this in my you know, computer monitor way back. Now these are none of those, but what this is, is a digital sync cable. So one end goes to one of the speakers and the other end goes to the other. And this, this basically syncs both of them. 
And there, on one speaker, on this one, where you have the volume controller, you can set the speaker to the left channel or the right channel, and then the other one will automatically set to the other channel. So if you set this one to the right channel, this will be left, left channel setting, this will be right, and so on. So I find that to be a very smart, unique design as well. And if you look at the cable length as well, you understand that you know this is as far as you can go with these speakers. And this is a pretty long length. I mean, on my desktop, which is a pretty large desktop, mind you, um, I had a little bit of lead, you know, lead room left after setting these speakers up. So I don't think there's much of a trouble setting these up for larger you know, desktop spaces in that way. So if you see in the front here, you will see a, you know, four knobs here. And these are all different settings that you can play around with for the speaker. And I won't go into every single one of them. I suggest you read Gordon's review for that because if I sit here and explain each one, it will take a while. Uh, and this video will be very long. However, I find that one of these settings that I, I found particularly interesting is the setting to, to kind of adjust the assisting woofer. So the, woof, so the woofer inside the unit itself, the opposing woofer, you can make it so that it doesn't have any effect in the sound. It's, you know, it's there. And you can make it so that it's actually uh, receiving power uh, and so on. And it, in doing that, I found that actually having the woofer work a little bit actually made a difference for me and made the speaker a little bit more pleasing to me. Now, there's also a setting that kind of um, helps to soften the sound and make it more analog as they would say um, for the tweeters. So you can make the assisted tweeters uh, a little bit more softer and kind of um, delayed in response uh, or or not delayed in response. But I found the delayed in response to be actually slightly more forgiving with certain recordings. Now talking about that, there's also a volume knob on the other unit. So this one is the volume knob but you also get a remote in case you are far away from the speakers in a near field setup. Um, now I did, I did try these in a stereo setting and they were decent, but again, the bass was a little bit lackluster in my opinion when it comes to uh, you know, a stereo listening session. Now beside the volume button is the two, two buttons right here. And again, read more on Gordon's review, but basically what these do is basically take your PCM file and upsample to DSD. And when I did this, I actually did see an improvement, especially when I was watching YouTube videos and such, but the inherent um, bad recordings, so recordings that were made poorly to begin with, um, we're not talking about resolution here. We're not talking about YouTube compression and stuff like that. We're talking strictly about bad, badly recorded music. With those recordings, I found it to be a little bit more unbearable when I upsampled. So it really depends on application. That's why you have the option to toggle back and forth between all these settings here. Now, talking about the sound quality. Now, I did have these on my desktop stand, like I said, and they sounded fantastic in terms of imaging. It was very sharp, very, very detailed, um, sparkly. And I didn't find any, you know, presence amongst the frequencies that I found to be, you know, elevated, meaning it was pretty darn neutral. At the same time, there was some uh, warmth in the mid range. It wasn't, you know, too lean sounding and I quite enjoyed it. And depending on the track, um, at times I did find it slightly bright. Now talking about that though, it's highly dependent on the track. So meaning, if you play something warm sounding, it will give you warmth. So it, it depends on what track you're playing and less about what the speaker can provide because the speakers are providing absolute neutrality in my opinion. And when you play something that is recorded with a little bit more brightness or a little bit more brilliance, then it, com it conveys that 100%. So at times I will listen to something warm sounding in my test tracks and I would be like, oh, this has some warmth. But then other times I would play something that I know has a little bit of sibilance and it would be, you know, just about the sibilance I would expect that I imagine 
when uh, I'm listening to you know other neutral speakers that I've heard in the past. So again, uh, I think it's pretty neutral. Now, much like a coaxial design, much much like a dual concentric design like the Kef LS50 that a lot of people love. This type of design actually images fantastically. Imaging is just pinpoint instrumental placement is perfect. In my opinion, the separation is excellent. Sound staging is quite large. And you know, it's a very convenient and with all these functionalities, it's just very, very intuitive for the most part. Now, one thing though, for the price of $8,000, I do have to say that I was a little bit disappointed with the bass response. Now with the assisted woofer fully engaged, I did find that there was some bottom end. However, I just didn't get that full response that I had when I used to have the KEF LS50 Meta with the KEF KC62 subwoofer. And that begs the question, you know, is Sony going to introduce a matching subwoofer with this? And since this doesn't really have a sub output, you know, or a pre out, I don't really think so. So just as given with this speaker right here, the bass is not deep enough for me for near field use. And for most people, they're not looking for that in near field, granted. They're looking for more of that, you know, impact, which this speaker has. So if you're someone who likes to analyze your music. If you're someone who wants, you know, uh, to enjoy music in the mid range and high frequency, but don't mind a little bit of, you know, uh, of a emphasized bass, or should I say, you know, deeper bass, then this speaker provides adequate amount of bass in my opinion, and pretty accurate in tone and all that as well. Now, one thing that I do have a complaint uh, is, you know, this is a pretty small speaker and as the size suggests, it sounds as it looks. It doesn't sound big like a floor stander or a stereo speaker that I'm used to. But once you kind of adjust to it, you know, you get used to that. But again, for $8,000, I would say that I would 100%, you know, use it for a studio setting for my work, but for not so professional settings for stereo enjoyment or even you know, near field enjoyment, I think that, you know, I personally have trouble spending $8,000 on a technology like this. But it is very cool. It is very cool. There's, you know, again, everything in one unit, amplification, all the DSP controls, everything is under your control. And I guess that's what some people want from a near field listening experience as well. So that's just not something I personally uh, look for but it was fun when when I had the chance to adjust all these settings and and really hear the difference and these differences all do make a difference uh, you know sometimes I hate it when companies advertise you know if, if you switch to this to this you know then you get this difference but then the difference is very very small here I actually heard a quite a bit of a difference and you know I definitely can tell that each one of these are doing something so there you have it, very interesting piece of technology, uh, very, very, you know, something, something that really will spark interest in people with a particular taste for near field listening and the ultimate, you know, near field listening experience. Uh, and that's pretty much it from me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>